family home. It may not be a $2.5 million home like yours, uh, but that sounds like a lot of red tape Excuse to me. Excuse me. Do you disagree? I, I really take that as a personal assumption. Do you disagree? Assumption. My home. Do you disagree that this was an overreach? I, I disagree that Ms. you're Katzen, casting my time has aspersions expired. on Mr. Chairman, me I or my... Thank you. Okay, so this is where we're going to start, Ms. Kaskin. Um, it, first of all, let me apologize because that was uncalled for. So let me do what she would never do, uh, which is to be an adult in this room. Damn! I'm also going to start with some nonsense that she was trying to spew. And unlike Ms. Bobert, I am legally trained. Oh, that's gonna hurt! In a verbal mismatch for the ages, fast rising Texas Democrat Jasmine Crockett faced off with Colorado Republican Lauren Bobert in what turned out to be a mismatch akin to any of the following Mayweather versus Jake Paul, Pete Brady versus any recent Browns team, or simply me versus the Sun. This committee runs my pressure up. Uh, and, and, and I. I do come prepared to committee and then there's always somebody from this side that does something ridiculous that, that throws me all the way off. Yes, it simply didn't end well for Boba. Now she got her hearing underway as Republicans tend to do with fallacious remarks sprinkled with some ad hominem for good measure. Emily home. It may not be a $2.5 million home like yours, uh, but that sounds like a lot of red tape Excuse to me. Excuse me. Do you I, disagree? I really take that as a personal assumption. Do, do you assumption. disagree? My home. Do you disagree that this was an overreach? I, I disagree that Ms. you're Katzen, casting my time has aspersions expired. on Mr. Chairman, me I or my... Thank you. The lady's time has expired. Mr. Chairman, um, could, could we just ask all of our good members to uh, respect uh, the civility and decorum and the uh, integrity of the witnesses who've come forward at their own expense to testify uh, before us today. And, and an insult is not a substitute for an argument. Uh, yield back to The you. chair would advise the members to adhere to the House standard of decorum and proceed in order. Um, Ms. Crockett of Texas is recognized for five minutes. And when it was Ms. Crockett's turn to take the floor, she reminded everyone just how different both sides are. <sighs> this committee runs my pressure up. Uh, and and, and I, I do come prepared to committee, and then there's always somebody from this side that does something ridiculous that, that throws me all the way off. So, uh, oh, Jesus. Okay, so this is where we're going to start, Ms. Kaskin. Um, it, First of all, let me apologize because that was uncalled for. So let me do what she would never do, uh, which is to be an adult in this room or in this chamber. So let me start there. I'm also going to start with some nonsense that she was trying to spew. And unlike Ms. Bobert, I am legally trained and I've passed a few bar exams. Uh, and I also legislated before I got here. So I do want to start with um, correcting the record a little bit, and if you want to add to that, please do. Uh, there was conversation about ATF because my colleagues love to talk about their guns, baby. Uh, and I'm from Texas, so let me be clear. I also own firearms. Let me scream. Democrats own guns, too. Let me make it clear. I, I own guns, and I'm licensed to carry. That is a regulation. Regulations aren't necessarily bad. It didn't stop me from being able to get a gun. Um, so... We were talking about, or y'all were talking about the ATF, which I wasn't going there. I didn't plan to go there. Uh, but you know what? I, I honestly wish the ATF would run amok because we know that seemingly the people that run this chamber don't have the courage to come up with one of the things we've heard is common sense regulations when it comes to guns. And to be clear, our Constitution, the Second Amendment, anticipates people have in common sense. Unfortunately, we have not done that. And unfortunately, it has cost us lives. So when you were testifying a little bit earlier, you talked about unintended consequences. And the fact that we are supposed to be able to anticipate that as lawmakers, when we are writing laws, unfortunately, not only have we ignored the unintended consequences, but we've got foreseeable consequences that are continually ignored. And that is why we are talking about regulation, at least on this side. So let's talk about my state, because we always got good stuff coming out, out of Texas. 
Unfortunately, my state decided that it didn't want to be a part of the overall national grid because my state did not want to deal with all of the quote unquote red tape. The cost of that was lives. So we had this winter storm and here it was, I was freshly being sworn into the Texas house and I don't know what I'm supposed to do because I started getting calls because there is this thing called climate change. Hello, nobody's in the chamber on the other side. But climate change is this real thing. And so in Texas, we had this terrible storm that took place. And uh, even though we are an energy capital, not just in this country, but in the world for clean and dirty energy, unfortunately, we couldn't keep our own lights on. And it was all because they wanted to avoid red tape. You know what the cost of that was? It was human lives. And I think that that's what being, what's being lost. You know what happened in Palestine or East Palestine? Mm -hmm. The cost was human lives. Unfortunately, seemingly some people don't want to consider human lives as an actual cost. The only cost that they ever talk about is dollars. Well, let me be clear. I'm not here because of corporate dollars. I'm here because of people. It's not the first, nor will it be the last time the new Democratic star makes headlines for her scathing retort. In the past two hearings, she's came with CVS length receipts. Because Georgia purged 87,000. Will the gentlewoman oh, yield? Not, I think I Georgia not, matters. I will not yield. I am reclaiming my time. We haven't had half as many hearings about guns as we've had on voting rights. And every time we seemingly have a hearing on voting rights, we're talking about the fact that people are cheating. So let's talk about who's cheating. I got a few articles. Uh, are you familiar with the fact that there was recently a settlement with this uh, little news company called Fox News? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, that was for about 780 something million dollars. Was it because they were lying about the, the elections? Yes, it was for a... Um, okay, there we go. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, there also was this article, because I don't want us to base anything on Georgia at all. Please, Jesus, not Georgia. Okay, because Georgia purged 87,000... Will the gentlewoman yield? Not, I think I Georgia not, matters. I will not yield. I am reclaiming my time. All right, so there were 87,000 people that were purged that were legitimate voters. So, no, we don't want a copy off of Georgia. Um, also, another GOP voter admits he committed fraud... Another one in Pennsylvania, man who admits he voted for Trump with his dead mom's name because he listened to too much propaganda. The gentlelady's time has expired. And not only does this instance demonstrate the sheer mass between both parties, I mean, Bobert didn't even have the respect to hear the opposite side's point of view after throwing her snide insult and then leaving, which is on par for the party of family values. As both Crockett and Raskin pointed out, they resort to insults because they have no argument. Justify uh, before us today. And, and an insult is not a substitute for an argument. Hey Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.